Hello everyone, once again, my name is Billy and welcome back to the shop. I am super excited about today's project because we're gonna scratch off a bucket list project for me. We're gonna make a fancy watch display case. Ooh, coffee time. So here's what I'm thinking for this project. We're gonna use some walnut. We're gonna need some brass, thinking we need a sheet of glass and some brass hinges. First thing to do is mill up this walnut so that we can make the outside pieces for the box. I milled up my lumber and I cut it to final width. We're gonna use miter joints for all of this. So I tilted the blade at a 45 degree angle, threw in a miter gauge and a sacrificial fence. And then I even cut a couple practice boards using some MDF just to make sure that my angles were good and they seemed spot on. Now it's time to cut the real boards. I made a bottom for our watch box. I took a board and I resawed it on the bandsaw, then glued the panel together, and it ran through the planer to flatten it. We're gonna cut grooves on the box for the bottom panel and for the glass. So the bottom panel, that's pretty straightforward. Starting at about an eighth of an inch from the bottom, I'm gonna make multiple passes across my table saw uh, until I have a groove wide enough that the bottom panel fits into. So that one's easy. The top part of the glasses, that's a whole other thing. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to treat it the same way as the bottom. I don't want to cut a groove and then put the glass in and glue the box together because heaven forbid the glass breaks, then you're never able to replace that glass on the box. So instead I need to have some sort of rabbit in the lid that allows me to put the glass into place and then shim it out with some sort of wood trim or something like that that keeps the glass held uh, into the lid. So a couple ways to do that. I can just put the bottom in, cut the lid of the box off, and then use a rabbiting bit around the, the, the top or the lid is, and then put the glass into place. So that's one option. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to do it like the bottom where I'm gonna cut a groove, but I'm gonna cut it starting where I'm gonna cut the lid of the box. So it's about, an inch from the top, I'm gonna start cutting away on the inside faces of my box until I get to about an eighth of an inch. That way, whenever I cut the lid of the box off, I already have a rabbit made for the glass to fit into. They may sound really confusing, but bear with me, you'll see.
With the box glued up, now I can make my layout marks for where I want to cut the lid off, but also where I want the splines at. So I will make a mark for where the blade is going to be whenever I cut the lid off. So that will be one side of the blade, and then this will be the other side of the blade. So we'll cut this section out right there. The blade's going to cut right in the middle of this. That'll separate it. So then I want to make sure that my splines are even. So I have to take into account that this one eighth of an inch won't be there. So my box won't be this wide. It'll be this wide. But I want a spline right in the middle. I'll make a mark where that spline is going to sit at. I know that this side is going to be a little bit shorter than this side for right now. Once I remove the waist when I cut the lid off, then the top will be the same as this, and then this will be my center line. So I will be able to put my spline right there. Then I also want to have a couple splines that are even from the bottom and from the top. So my top area is going to be one inch. So I will set my combination square to a half inch, put a mark there, and I'll do the same from the bottom. So it's going to look proportionate. It's time to cut the notches that's going to hold the brass that will be our splines for the box. So to do that, I made this spline cutting jig. And I've never used this particular jig before, so this is the first time I get to try it out. I put a ripping blade into the table saw that's going to give me a flat groove whenever I cut it. And I clamp a stop block here to my jig and then push the box up against the block. So I'm going to push it across the blade and it's going to cut a notch. And I'll rotate the box around and then cut the notches for the splines all the way around on all four corners, flip the box over and do it again for the bottom corners. Then I'll move the box over to the side and I'll cut the splines for the middle section. All the splines are glued into place, so I'm going to buzz off the remaining pieces on the bandsaw, then I'll take it over to the disc sander, sand all of this flush, and then hit it with the orbital sander to make it nice and smooth. These splines cleaned up really nice, and it's time to cut the lid off of the box. I moved my table saw fence over so that my blade is about an inch away from the top edge of my box. I'll push it through the blade, cut each side till the lid comes off. Wish me luck. I got a sheet of glass here that I'm going to cut to put inside the lid of the box. 
And I'm just going to use this little cutting wheel thing. It's a little cheap tool that I got at a big box store. And it's worked out pretty well so far on other projects I've done. And the plan is I'll cut the glass, put it inside, and then I plane down some walnut that's the exact thickness of my rabbit. So after I get the glass in there, I will trim out the inside with this walnut till it's nice and flush with the bottom, it's flush with the edge, and then I will screw that into place. That way, in case something happens where the glass does get broken, you can unscrew it, remove the trim, replace the glass, and then reinstall it. time to build out the liner for the inside of the box. And this is what's gonna have the dividers that hold all of the watches. I want the box to hold 15 watches, so I'm gonna do three rows of five. And this is a great use for scrap. So I've got, anytime I get like cutoffs about this size, throw them over into a big bucket and then get them out for projects like this. And this is the perfect size to do the inside liner. I can mill these down, I can cut them in half and get all my pieces out of that. Now it's time to take these and get started. I have my glass in my lid and I need to attach some shim pieces so that the glass stays in place. I middle up some lumber and then cut some miters at a 45 degree angle. These fit nicely in my lid. They're nice and flush with the bottom and the thickness of the shim with the box lid is the same thickness as the bottom of the box. These should work out great. Now we have to attach them. There's a couple ways to do this. You could glue it in there, but then if you did and the glass broke, you couldn't replace it. You could also use some pin nails to do it, but what I was thinking was I will use some brass screws. Figure these will look really nice since we have the brass blinds and also I'm going to use some brass hinges, so I'm really liking this. In order to do this, I want to make sure that those shims are pressed down against the glass as hard as possible, that way it doesn't rattle as you open and close the box. To do that, I'm going to use some cutoffs from my glass. So if you try this at home, just be careful, don't cut yourself up to a million pieces. I can take the glass out, put the off cut in, and then my drill will be able to fit through this area and I can get a clean straight line all the way through to drill the holes for my brass screws. I'm also going to use some clamps to clamp this down so I can get a good firm 
press down against that piece of glass. So at this point, I got my glass, I got my drill, I got my clamps, I got my glass pieces of death, I got screws, I got coffee, I got Tagalong Girl Scout cookies. Let's do this. I find it funny that this has been such a bucket list project for me because I don't even own watches. This is the only watch that I own and I think it costs $30. Better save these. I'm putting a little bit of wax on my screws. Since these are the brass screws, it's easy for them to break. and We don't want that to happen. This one feels a little tight, so I'm gonna use a steel screw to kind of make a pathway for the brass one, because the brass one might break. I decided to upgrade the hinges on the case. This is the original one that I had, and it's okay. I mean, you can buy this at pretty much any store. And I upgraded to some Brusso hinges, and geez, like, these are heavy. You can knock a guy out with this. You can look at the difference in these hinges. These are the regular ones I bought. I bought these at a woodworking store, and they're nice hinges, they're, they're good stuff. But compare them to the Brusso hinges. Look how thick these things are. They are massive. And they have a positive 95 degree stop, which is nice. I have all my parts laid out and it's time to apply finish. I'm gonna use some Osmos Top Oil because it's really easy to apply and it gives a nice look. I'm gonna use a white scotch Brite pad to work it into the grain and then any of the extra left over, I'll wipe off with a cotton rag. We're in the home stretch of this project, which is really exciting. The box is made, so now it's time to turn my attention to making the holders for the watches. I used a laser cutter and some quarter inch plywood to make a mock-up. And to put this in the box, I really like the way it looked. It's got a round bottom for the watch band and a flat surface for the watch face. And then I inset the center part with two legs. That way I can wrap some leather around the center and the leather will sit flush with the legs. I like this. So then after that, I had to make the real deal. I took a template and put it against some two inch thick stock and traced it out. Then I went over to the bandsaw and rough cut the profile of it. Then I went over to the disc sander and sanded that profile smooth till I got to my line. And I really liked how that turned out. I need 15 watch holders. So I made about half of them doing it that way. 
And then once I knew this is exactly what I want, I let the CNC make the rest of them. And I like doing things manually. I don't usually like machines to do the stuff for me, but I need 15 watch holders. And that means I need 30 of these end caps that go on the ends of them. And that's really laborious. And I've got some other clients wanting their project. So I got to get this thing moving. Another thing that I messed around with was cutting holes for some dowels. So I, I put a center hole in a couple of these, put a dowel through, then use those dowels to register my end caps. And I kind of like how that worked out. So I'm going to try that on a few of them and see how it goes. That might help me out in a future project. So the next step is sand these end caps, glue together some of these pieces, some of my inserts that weren't exactly two inches, that were an inch each, start assembling these things. This display case was an absolute pleasure to make and I was thrilled that I was given the opportunity to build it. There were some new techniques that I learned along the way, particularly with these watch holders. I love how these turned out. If you like the content that I'm providing, please consider subscribing to the channel and also hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified whenever I post the next video. You can also follow me on Instagram to stay up to date on the latest happenings in my shop. My handle is Genealogist Woodworker. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.